ويريكم آياته فأي آيات الله تنكرون Have you ever wondered why bees construct hexagonal honeycombs rather octagonal or pentagonal? Mathematicians were looking for the answer to this question, and they reached to an interesting conclusion. A hexagon is the most appropriate geometric form for the maximum use of a given area. None of the other shapes fit together perfectly to provide more usable area and consume less amount of wax for construction of a comb. The bee's honeycomb is an amazing piece of engineering, but why have they evolved to produce this hexagonal pattern? Well, actually, they don't have too many choices. If you try to put pentagons together, for example, they just don't fit together nicely. Or circles leave lots of little gaps. If they want to produce a network of regular shapes which fit together neatly, uh, then you've really only got three options. You can do equilateral triangles, or you could do squares, or you can do the bees' hexagons. But why of those three does the bee choose the hexagons? Well, it turns out that the triangles actually use much more wax than any of the other shapes. Squares are a little better, but it's the hexagons which use the least amount of wax. It's a solution that was only mathematically proven a few years ago. So the bees use the most appropriate form possible. The method used in construction of honeycomb is also very amazing. Bees start the construction of the hive from two or three different places and weave the honeycomb simultaneously in two or three strings. They start from different places. The bees, great in number, construct identical hexagons and then weave the honeycomb by combining these together and meeting in the middle. The junction points of the hexagons are assembled so deftly that no defect can be found in the structure of honeycomb. Look at that, it's, it's perfect. Yeah. Hexagons here. Yeah. It is amazing. And uh, the hexagon is a very strong structure. It's uh, an engineering wonder for sure. While thinking about this extraordinary performance, we for sure have to admit the existence of a superior will that ordains these creatures. The evolutionists want to explain this achievement with the concept of instinct and try to present it as a simple attribute of the bee. They've just done it for thousands and thousands of years. They were born to do it. They just instinctively know that this is the shape of their home. If there's an instinct at work, and if the rule is applied over all bees and leads them to work in harmony while they are not informed of each other, then it means that there is an exalted wisdom that rules over all these tiny creatures. Or in other words, the creator of these tiny creatures inspired them with what they have to do. And this fact was declared in Quran 14 centuries ago. <laughs> Furthermore, the worker bees, those who gather pollen and make honey, are actually all females. The male bees do not make honey. 
This was only known recently, however the mentioning verses pointed out to this fact 14 centuries ago. The Arabic words Kulli, Fasluki and Butuniha are all in female forms, whereas the male forms of these words are Kul, Fasluk and Butunihim. So by using the female moods of these words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs us that the worker bees are the female ones. Moreover, these verses pointed to another recent discovery. Bees build their hives from their own wax, however scientists just discovered bees that build their hive in wood and even in solid rock. And your Lord inspired the bee, set up hives in the mountains, and in the trees, and in what they construct.